think I'm live in all the places. Took me a hot second or 12. And I feel like on Facebook, I look, <laughs> it's like I look awkward on Facebook, but I look okay on Instagram. Hey, Instagram world, you're getting me. Facebook is getting some kind of <laughs> weird, I think that Facebook is doing something weird. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm just going to, let's see, maybe there's something weird going on with my camera. There wasn't earlier, but, oh, that's better. Things got weird. Good times. Always fun and exciting. Always an adventure, right? Always an adventure. So here's what the thing is today. Today, we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about adjudication. And we're talking about ways, there you go, right? I had to just clean off my camera. So we're, the lens. So we're talking about ways for you to be the adjudicator that everyone wants their student to sing for. And the reason that this is coming up right now is because there's lots of a National Association of Teachers of Singing um, adjudication going on. So lots of auditions throughout North America especially, and here in Ontario, our um, adjudication is, uh, our adjudication festival thingy is happening, and so I am in fact doing some adjudicating right now. Um, not right now, right now, but at the moment, I have some on the docket to adjudicate, and so um, I've done a lot of adjudicating uh, live. Uh, <laughs> this is a fun adventure here in 2020 to do this, the adjudicating um, while you're watching it, but I've done a lot of live adjudicating and uh, I super duper enjoy adjudicating. I love it. And one of the things that, I mean, it kind of combines all of my favorite things in one, like I get to be up there talking, yay, and I get to talk about voice pad, yay, and I get to encourage new singers, yay, and I get to meet tons of great singers and new singers and voice teachers, yay. It's all of my favorite things all in one. <laughs> However, we've all had the opportunity. We've all, I shouldn't say we all. I have along the way made some mistakes adjudicating. Of course, we all do. Um, and I have also along the way had many not stellar experiences with adjudicators and my students um, receiving feedback. And so, um, and I'll just put this into context as well. When I was working with a traditional voice studio model, the, my, the singers that I work with had at least five or six opportunities through the year to sing and perform in an adjudicated situation. Um, and they didn't have to take those opportunities and they didn't and none of those opportunities had to be for um, like prizes or whatever you could go in and do them um, without uh, lots of opportunities where you don't have an audience some opportunities where you do have an audience uh, lots of different kinds of performance opportunities with adjudication so um, I have received many 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 many, many comments um, and adjudications for singers through the years. Many, 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 many. So I've read many, 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 many comments and adjudications through the years. And I know the feeling of getting an adjudication from an adjudicator who isn't communicating well and who uh, yet, who hasn't figured out yet how to communicate well. And while what they may be saying uh, about the singer may actually be correct. It may actually be good information. It, it, the delivery sometimes can be really off-putting and can make you as the teacher feel pretty awful. And it can make your student feel pretty awful. And it can make your student question whether you're actually a good teacher or not because of the way that things are um, uh, framed. So I've had that experience absolutely through the years. And um, again, it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily that the information that we're getting is incorrect. It's that that information is really parsed in a way that 
um, isn't very useful. <laughs> so it gives, it really gives us this, um, it's hard to handle. So I always say the, the festivals and adjudication experiences that my students have, um, the best ones are the ones where I don't have to do any damage control afterwards. That's like my favorite <laughs> when I don't have to do any damage control or where I don't have to, you know, do the like, well, what they, I think what they're really meaning to say here is <laughs> where you don't have to do that kind of work. So here's one thing to consider as you adjudicate and when you adjudicate, and I hope you will, um, try your hand at adjudicating, especially if you're involved in a, in a NATS chapter where you um, enter your students and give feedback. Um, here is the one, one, the one rule that, the one rule to rule them all that has been so useful. And I don't remember where I heard this first. So I am annoyed, a little bit annoyed with myself because I can't give, I can't credit the person that I heard this from first. So. If you are that person, please do feel free to let me know that like Shannon, I told you that way back when. So please feel free. This is, um, it's not that I hadn't been adjudicating in this way before. It's just that when I heard it phrased this way, I was like, yes, that's what I'm doing. And that's what's helping um, me to give the adjudications that I do. So um, this is the main rule. When you are watching a singer when you are adjudicating when you're listening to a singer assume that that singer is being taught by your most respected colleague or mentor assume that that singer is working with whoever is your idol your voice ped teaching idol assume that that's who they're working with do that so then the way that that works is it changes us in three ways. It changes the, the way that we adjudicate in three ways. First of all, it changes the way that we listen to the singer because, and the way that we receive what the singer is giving. Because we look at that, uh, that singer, we listen to that singer, and in, a, in the back of our minds, uh, while we're, you know, we're seeing all of the things that are happening and we're, you know, we're doing some diagnosis and we're thinking, okay, that breath was, a little crazy and oh they don't know their music or blah, blah blah it takes the they don't know their music or their yes it is applicable across lots of industries nikki yeah um they don't know their music or maybe you're saying oh gosh they're really singing out of tune there or oh that sound is so pressed or so breathy rather than you thinking to yourself oh why is it so breathy you think to yourself hmm so and so is their teacher so Obviously they're working on that because obviously so-and-so heard that. My, my respected colleague heard that and obviously they're working on it. And if their music isn't, you know, as well learned as it could be, well, maybe they didn't have enough time rather than, Ooh, this is a, this is bad. Oh, this is so bad. You start to give so much grace to that singer and to the situation and you start to then frame the singing in such a way that it's not a bad singer in front of you or like, oh, something's really happening there that's so, uh, you start to frame it in like, oh, that's too bad that the tuning was a little off today. That's okay. Um, I, obviously they're working on it, <laughs> right? You start to frame it with this grace, which then that, that framing then translates into um, what you choose to comment on in the adjudications. Now, I'm kind of a singer, or, or kind of an adjudicator who I try to get like as much information down as possible. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to notice this, and I want to like, I want to give you lots of great tips for this, and maybe you've tried this, and da la la, right? So yes, it comes from a place of kindness and love, absolutely. Um, so then we 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 decide what we're going to comment on. And rather than deciding that we're going to comment on the fact that it is, um, oh, I don't know, maybe it's not well prepared, we, we decide to comment on the thing that is, um, the thing that is the actual, like the things that you can, um, 
that you that you could have grace about, right? <laughs> so you start to make really good decisions about what are the things that I'm actually going to comment on. And then the third thing that that changes is it changes how you comment. So again, if say you decide to comment on the fact that it doesn't seem to be well prepared, well, rather than saying this isn't well prepared, you can say, you will start to say something like, because keep in mind, this is your most respected colleague who is teaching this student. So obviously they did their best to get that preparation and it starts to become, well, maybe they're having a pretty terrible day or maybe something has happened in the background or that you don't know about. Or maybe they just, maybe this singer went into the into the festival or into the Nats auditions or whatever it is um, and they wanted to do, they still wanted to perform and get feedback even though they knew it wasn't as well prepared as it could be. That's happened to me where singers, where I, I'm saying to the singer, look, I know, and you know, that this isn't your best performance. It's not going to be your best performance. It's not as well prepared as it could be. Do you still want to do this? And yes, they still want to do it because they still want to get some good, they still want to have the performance experience. They still want to have some experience, some uh, feedback. And that's cool. What I don't want to see on my, adjudica my student's adjudication sheet is, this was really badly prepared. What I do want to see is, keep working to solidify entrances and exits. Keep working to solidify your uh, relationship with the pianist or your relationship with the accompaniment or blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what I want to hear. And that's the kind of adjudication that's going to come out of you noticing the things that are going on and the things that you would like to have to see um, have better coordination or better efficiency or working better. And um, the way that you describe them and the way that you comment on them. The other thing that will happen is when you start to prescribe things, so when you start to say, um, or when you think about saying, um, here's something that you might want to consider working on, see how I said it there? I said it like, here's something you might want to consider. Um, have you considered using XYZ exercise? Have you considered using a mirror to gauge your expressions. I don't know, whatever whatever your suggestion is, rather than saying you should use a mirror, the assumption is gonna be this singer is working with a really fabulous teacher and they've probably already done this, but just in case they haven't thought of it or the teacher hasn't done it yet or whatever, just in case, I'm gonna throw that in there as a have you considered or um, one thing to try if you haven't already might be. So you start to put your suggestions then for solutions in this very kind, gentle, gracious way. So then when the singer and the teacher get your adjudications back, they feel supported. They feel like they've been seen and they've been really heard. They don't feel like every single thing that they've done wrong is being pointed out and that someone's angry at them or that their teacher isn't a good teacher or you as the teacher don't feel like you're doing a bad job. So you get the support and you get the opportunity then as the adjudicator to also to contribute a little bit, right? So when you're saying something like, have you tried blah, 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 if the teacher hasn't tried it, they don't feel bad for not having tried it before. So rather than saying you should blah, 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 and that will fix this problem, that's prescriptive, overly prescriptive in a, in a kind of shaming way, or at least it can be, it can feel that way. So we want to take that overly prescriptiveness out of it by thinking that I'm going to write this comment to my most valued colleague and my, or my most, uh, my, my mentor. I often have, I literally will often have one of my, well, my primary mentor in my mind when I'm thinking about when I'm watching a, a, a singer so that I can see, yes, and that and you can see the things they're already working on as well and confirming those things exactly and making sure that everybody's on the right track and noticing those things, right? Because then, and if I have that person in my mind and I'm thinking to myself, this is their student, 
they've already seen this. So anything that I'm saying is really just a bolstering of what they've already seen and what they're already working on. So you have the assumption that they're already working on it, they're already on the track, um, rather than the pointing out of the things that they probably didn't see, right? So we wanna, we wanna, keep, the, we wanna keep that graciousness and that support going. And that's the way, or a way anyway, to change the way that you are writing and change the way that you're adjudicating so that you become that adjudicator, you know, the one that everybody wants their students to sing for. <laughs> the other thing I'll say that this also can help with is, um, that this idea can also help with, is if you're adjudicating, um, let me backtrack slightly. I can always tell when I'm reading an adjudication from an adjudicator who doesn't work with children, for example. So if they're adjudicating my 10 year old and the, some of the things that they're, my 10 year old singer and some of the things they're writing there, I'm like, oh my gosh, you've never worked with kids before or you don't know how to work with kids. <laughs> or I can tell, you know, an adjudicator who um, perhaps has never uh, worked with music theater or um, who doesn't value music theater or contemporary styles perhaps um, or who doesn't understand what the progression is of music theater or uh, of development in contemporary styles they don't necessarily know what the actual what a what a normal progression of the voice looks like in contemporary styles can always tell when when you've got a you've got a an adjudicator uh, writing about something that they're not necessarily comfortable with, and if they've decided that um, if they haven't kept this in mind, this graciousness, right? So this is the other thing that this helps with. If you happen to be adjudicating styles, ages, um, uh, what I put a few other things in here, voice types, rep. If you happen to be a, a, a adjudicating rep that you're not necessarily comfortable with or that you don't teach yourself this again will help you to keep this this will again help with your adjudications because you're in the back of your mind rather than sort of like judging that or judging the child um, for singing for making sounds that you think might not be good you're going to assume that that teacher knows what they're doing and that that teacher, you're gonna assume it's your most respected colleague and you're gonna assume that teacher knows what they're doing and you're going to assume that the teacher is working on it already. So yes, they may be making sounds that aren't, uh, aren't great right now, but we all make sounds that aren't great along the journey, like we all do. So, <laughs> so they may be making sounds that make you slightly uncomfortable and that's fine. You can acknowledge that, but acknowledge that within the context that the teacher also knows that those sounds might not be the best sounds right now. Trust me, the teacher knows. <laughs> the teacher is listening to them every single day and going like, wow how do I get this to happen? Like, how do I, you know, move this voice along and we're on this journey and, you know, I'm going to keep moving this voice along. So this, this kind of like keeping in mind that the, that you're working with, oh gosh, pause. There we go. Keeping in mind. Yes. It's part of the growth process. Totally. To, to make some sounds that are not phenomenal uh, or not well coordinated. That's how we learn. We make sounds that aren't well coordinated. Right. Um, Something maybe going funky on my Instagram there. I'm not sure if you're coming in and out a little bit. Oh, there's something. Whoops, how's that? There we go. Maybe that that'll help. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, that's that's all I'm going to talk about today. That's all I'm going to do today. Uh, just a little thing about if you are adjudicating right now, something to consider. And huh, you know, if you get that adjudication back from whatever you've entered your students into just uh and and it's not worded well or it's worded in a way that kind of hurts your heart a little bit and kind of gets you in the feelers um and makes you feel like you're less than or not doing well um know that just know that know that you're loved 
<laughs> I feel like you are doing well. So if you get those comments back, see what you can do to take the best information out and then maybe work with a mentor or work with someone if you feel like you're not able to, uh, if you feel like you're not able to apply the information in the way that you would like to or yeah, lots of, thank you, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, uh, maybe contact a, a mentor or uh, a teacher and give them grace as well. Exactly. Give those, give those folks grace. And, oh, I know it hurts. Like I said, this is, this is, I can't count the number of times I've gotten adjudications back and thought, oh, wow, I'm a really bad teacher. Uh, <laughs> because of the, the way that the adjudications are framed. And then when I dig in, I'm like, no, actually, actually, they're saying stuff that I say too. And this is actually good. This is good information. It's just put into this thing that into a way that isn't uh, doesn't communicate very well. It <laughs> doesn't communicate support very well. So. All right. That's that for that today. That's all for today. Um, Thanks for coming out. If you're watching this on replay, then watch, then you're supposed to hashtag replay. <laughs> Just for, there's some like Facebook algorithm <laughs> that goes on there, you know. Um, and yeah, that's true, Lindsay, actually. Yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> you actually never know, right? <laughs> like you may, you may actually be adjudicating someone who, who's teaching you, you really respect and it isn't necessarily showing in the singing, right? So even though you know that like 75, 99% of the studio sings like angels and then there's, the, and then you're seeing the 1% that is still on their journey, right? Or that is in this journey and you never know. So yeah, yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. All right, friends, have a great week. And if you are adjudicating, may the force be with you. <laughs> I am off to do some more.